Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Rafat Larir from the Islamic University of Gaza, Palestine. We continue our online course on uh, Shakespeare. Uh, today, we finish uh, uh, Act 3 uh, from Othello. We are going to continue to discuss uh, the play uh, in more detail, uh, scene by scene. Uh, in, in the previous scene, we have seen how um, Iago managed to easily manipulate uh, Othello. Uh, some people might describe I Iago as the smartest person in Shakespeare. Others prefer to describe him as one of the scariest, if not the scariest uh, character in all of Shakespeare. He's manipulative, uh, he's a hypocrite, he's a liar, he's dishonest, the way he uses his language. Even we've seen how Othello was a master of words, of storytelling. He, uh, Iago manages to, uh, to outsmart him. Uh, and the most fascinating thing is that he works by two things. Number one, by innuendo. And innuendo basically means by, by, uh, uh, by suggestion. He doesn't uh, tell uh, you know, what to do or how to feel, but even sometimes he tells him not to do something so that he can do it. So he says, please, he said, okay, I will, you should, when Othello said, kill Cassio in three days, he said, okay, please, I'll do it, but please don't kill, uh, uh, what's her name, this Demona. Planting again the seed of this, that the possibility that this Demona can be killed. Uh, now, uh, with uh, the, the second point is that how fascinatingly gradual he is. The way he plans things step by step, it's like building a huge, uh, a big house and it's like an engineer. Uh, remember we said, I like not that. And then he said, uh, before you loved this Demona, did Cass, you maybe love her? Were they both in love? Suggesting, you know, indicating something and then uh, telling the story of the dream, and then uh, uh, later on uh, the, the, the handkerchief, and we'll see other tricks performed by, by Iago. So probably uh, Act 3, Scene 3 was the peak, the climax of the whole play. It, it was intense, traumatic. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, Othello collapsing, falling victim, falling prey to uh, Iago's manipulation. Uh, I am not sure again how much you like Othello or dislike him or dislike Iago and how, how you feel, but at least we pity the fool. We pity uh, Othello for uh, what Iago is doing, is doing to him. Now all of a sudden, in this scene, we have some, well, I'm, probably I told you before that this play is void of, of comic relief. Indeed. We don't have comic scenes, but the scene, scene for shifts to some uh, to a lighter tone, a lighter atmosphere. Even there's a clown. A clown is usually, you know, some a servant, somebody. But even this comic, a tiny comic uh, scene here, serves a purpose. This morning, talking to the clown. Uh, do you know Sarah, guy or dude? Where? Lieutenant Cassio lies, and he says, I dare not say he lies anywhere. Why, man? He's a soldier, and for me to say a soldier lies is stabbing. Do you see what's going on here? Can somebody tell me what's going on here? Huh? Somebody? Somebody type something, say something. Are they trying to make a trap for this Demona to like uh, make her convince that she was but she wasn't? Who? Oh, this Demona is speaking here. This is um, this Demona, Muhammad. Okay, okay. Demona talking to somebody what what do you notice in the dialogue what's going on what is repeated remember you pay attention to things that are repeated to things that are 
uh, used in a different way. What word attracts your attention in the text? What is the key word in this uh, extract? Hello? Anybody? I would say like Sarah and Lies. I don't know who Sarah, I think I'm not catching up, probably. <laughs> and live, uh, it's like a pun here. Muhammad, Muhammad, I yeah. just said what Sarah is. It's not capital, uh -huh. so it's not a name of somebody. She's talking uh -huh. to, the, to the clown. And yes, the word lies. The word lies. This demona is asking, where is, can you say, can you tell me where Cassio is? Yes. But she uses the word lies, meaning where he is, where he is staying, where he is. And then he says, I dare not say he lies anywhere. He doesn't lie. He uses the word lie, meaning not to not tell the truth. And then this Dumona, why man? Because now it doesn't make sense lies and lies and then he explains he says he's a soldier and for me to say a soldier lies is a stabbing soldiers are noble they're not supposed to be lying and the shift here from the dramatically intense scene three act three to a lighter one uh, tells us that there are two worlds here this demona is unaware of what's going on she doesn't know that uh, somebody is planning to destroy her life and her marriage she doesn't know it's Iago that is doing this. She's not, she doesn't know that uh, now her husband that she loves very much, for whom she left her family, she disobeyed her, her father, is probably planning to kill her. And this, I don't think this brings uh, laughter or dramatic relief. Even, it makes it even uglier than, than, than possible. And with Shakespeare, Playing still on the words, the, the repeating words related to lying and hypocrisy and double, uh, having double faces is also a motif because there is always a, a difference between appearance and, and reality. And we move here the same scene very quickly. Uh, remember we said this demo, uh, Emilia committed a horrible mistake when she took the handkerchief and gave it uh, to, uh, to her husband, Iago. Some people defend her. They say, no, he asked for it. He, he was pushy, he was aggressive. He asked for it a hundred times. Even the text here that, uh, I'm not sure whether this is Shakespeare or other uh, editors later on, when he snatches the, uh, the handkerchief, Iago literally snatches the, the. So some people say, no, I don't blame her much. She was holding it. She wasn't, you know, maybe she couldn't, didn't want to give it to, to Iago. And then Iago snatches the. Here, this Demona is asking Emilia about the handkerchief. It's simple. Emilia, you like this Demona. You are her maid. You're loyal. You say you're her servant. Tell her the truth. But of course, the truth here would have ended everything, would have uh, uh, exposed Iago and ended the tragedy that is to come. Emilia doesn't do so. So where should I? Lose, uh, where should I lose that handkerchief, Emilia? I know not, madam. I don't know. Believe me, I had rather have lost my, my purse full of crusaders. I, I wish I had lost all my money, a lot of gold. And but my noble more is true of mine and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are. It were enough to put him to ill thinking. He says, I trust Oth uh, Othello. He's not jealous. He knows no jealousy. He doesn't care about trivial things such as a handkerchief. But losing it might make him think ill of me. It might make him suspicious. And I, I, like, I like this because jealousy is a major theme in Othello. Remember the green-eyed monster. Emilia says, is he not jealous? Who? He? 
I think the son, I love the expression here. I think the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. And again, referencing his background, being African, being black, probably because he lived too much under the sun, he doesn't have such feelings. I'm not sure how bad, how racist this is. This is. Probably you need to think about it uh, even more. But again, this Dimona admits that, no, he's not that type to be uh, jealous. Uh, uh, but again, sadly, she doesn't know. The dramatic irony here, this is where, again, the audience knows more. We know more than, uh, than this Dimona. We know that Emilia is lying. We know that uh, 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 Othello has, has been turned into a, a green-eyed monster by, by Iago. And then Demona says later on, I can't speak of uh, when Othello shows up, uh, uh, enters, uh, come now, you promise, what promise, Chuck, I have sent to bid Castle uh, uh, as Iago planned. She pushes for Cassio, come speak with you, and he says, I have a salt and sorry, I am sick. I am, he pretends to be, to be sick. Or says he is, he is sick. He doesn't want to talk about Cassio. He is psychologically suffering. And, and then when he asks about the, uh, the handkerchief, Iago talks, uh, Othello talks about why it is important to him. And this is some of the most amazing description in the play. It's beautiful, but again, it adds more about, gives us more about Othello's origin from Africa, the man who believes in superstitions. You know, Khurafat is very superstitious. Uh, magic, how he's used here as a symbol of exorcism. Uh, he's an exotic person with exotic items. Everything is magical. Everything is, is mysterious and superstitious. He says, uh, he says, I don't know where they did the handkerchief. Is. That is a fault that handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. Okay, hatta. He doesn't say my mother took it from an Egyptian. Give it to my mother. She was a charmer, a magician, uh, and could almost read the thoughts of people. She, she knows how to read people's thoughts. She knows the future. Again, he's, he's the, the storyteller. This is what he loves most. She told her while she kept it, it would make her amiable and subdue my father. When, when this Egyptian woman gave uh, the handkerchief to, to Othello's mother, she told her, as long as you have this, your husband's going to love you and you will be uh, amiable, you will be able to win him entirely to her love, subdue my father entirely to her love. There's magic here. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathly and his spirits should hunt after new fancies. Once she loses the, uh, the handkerchief, uh, and he will hate her and he will start running, chasing uh, uh, after uh, uh, other women. She dying, and the drama, he likes the drama. He likes these little tiny uh, details. My mom gave this to me when she, when she was dying. So this is a very important item to him. Uh, just now, uh, and this Demona should know this. This Demona should know this. She, they have been together for I don't know how many months. But she described the, uh, the, the handkerchief as something uh, base, trivial. Now for him, well, this is Wartak, but yeah, this is, oh my God. It's not something trivial. He's not going to let it go. Perhaps he's not going to let it go because of what Iago uh, told him, you know, the handkerchief and Casio. Uh, so she dying gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wife to give it her. If I get married, to give it to my wife. I, I did so and take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye. Wow, this is as precious as an eye. To lose it or to give it away were such suspicion as nothing else could match. It's the worst possible crime you could ever do. Look at again how little this Demona talks, like most women in Shakespeare. Is it possible, really? Is it possible? And then he continues, he gives even more, he goes into, it is true, there's magic in the web of it. I like how again, the web, it's like, 
uh, a Sibyl that had numbered in the world, the sun to course 200 compasses in her prophetic fury sowed the work, the worms, the worms, the silk worms made of silk were held that did bleed the silk and it was dyed. dyed. What does die mean here? Died. Sabr. In mummy, which the skillful conserved of maiden's heart. And it was warm and, you know, compass. I don't know. The, 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 the silk, the mummy, the dyes of mummy is made of the hearts of young women. In faith, is it true? You know, exaggeration. Again, most veritable, therefore, look to it well. Don't lose it. I hope you don't lose it. And sadly, this demona goes back. So there are, there's a problem here, losing the handkerchief. In itself, this could have been, you know, not important. But with what Iago did, this is really horrible. And this demona doesn't make it any better. She makes this even worse. She brings the Cassio to the, to the conversation. And she says, why so I can't say it, but I will not now. This is a trick. You're tricking me. So you don't talk about Cassio. So you don't have Cassio back. Pray, you let Cassio be received again. And then he goes back to the handkerchief. Look at how this, how intense this is. Fetch me the handkerchief, my mind misgives. Come, come, you will never meet a more sufficient man. He's a good man. The handkerchief, I pray, talk me of Cassio, Othello, the hand. And Othello says, the handkerchief. And this demon, a man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love shared dangers with you, he fought with you, he's a soldier with you, he did everything, he loves you. The handkerchief. And I love to see this again and again uh, performed on stage. The give and take. The handkerchief Cassio, the handkerchief Cassio, the handkerchief Cassio. This Demona unwittingly said, unknowingly pours uh, fuel on the fire. And then uh, when he, he leaves angry, few in, fur in fury, furious, I never saw this before. Sure, there is some wonder in this handkerchief. Maybe this is a, what a, what a handkerchief this is. And Emilia says some of the most interesting things about women. And she is full of anti-feminist expressions. But here, this is an anti-men expression uh, uh, quote here. You could quote it, especially the ladies. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. Yani, in one year, two years, we know the uh, true reality of men. It just you know a man, one year, two years, and then you know them very well. They are all but stomachs, and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and they, fill, they belch us. Wow, I love this. And look at the interesting difference between this Demona and Emil. This Demona is no cute little still young newly married but Emilia is experienced she's been married for a long time she knows men this demona wants to find an excuse she says i am i am most unhappy it, uh, in the loss of it and then don't worry all women are like this they are all but stomachs and we all but food and then uh, Cassio comes to the stage and he asks her yet again, I do beseech you that you, by your virtuous means, I again exit and be a member of his love. And this demona again promises, don't worry, I'm doing my best, you see. And she is uh, true to that. Alas, the day I never gave him cause. This demona says, I've never, I, I didn't offend him. I didn't offend uh, Othello. Uh, uh, Emilia replies yet again with more wisdom, wim womanly wisdom about women in general. But jealous soul will not be answered. He tell she tells her, no, this man is jealous. All men are jealous. Man, good. She says, a just man does not need a cause to be jealous. He doesn't need a cause to be jealous. They are. They will be. They will make a fight for nothing. They are not 
uh, they are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. Because this is part of their nature. Men are by nature jealous, not because of trivial things. It is a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. I love this expression. But again, I don't know what Shakespeare is trying to do this because somebody else likened jealousy to, to a monster and was Iago. When he said, beware my master, my lord of the green eyed monster. So jealousy is a monster. And finally here, before I give you a chance to comment and say stuff, uh, there was something I wanted to quote. I don't know where it is, but maybe I missed it. When this demona says, yes, okay, so I'll go back to it because it's important. Uh, okay. Here, here. Uh, Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, uh, my advocation is not now in tune. I, I, I do my best. I'm talking to him. He's not listening to me. My Lord is not my Lord. Remember Iago? I am not what I am, nor should I know him. I don't know him. This is a new man to me. He's different. And later on, she talks about how this could possibly be. It's impossible that probably he's not, uh, what should I say? He's, uh, he's not angry because of something uh, I did to him, because she, she tells uh, Emilia I didn't give him cause. Uh, she, she thinks that there must be something in Cyprus, in, in Venice, something in the army. She doesn't, she wrongly thinks that he, he must be angry at somebody else, not me. I didn't give him cause. Why is he treating me this way? My Lord is not my Lord. Othello is not, is not Othello. And finally, in the last uh, a bit of this, uh, 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 of this scene, we have a new woman. The woman, uh, the woman's name is Bianca. She is Cassio's mistress. Now look at this. Uh, always try to compare people with similarities. Women compare them to other women. Shakespeare gives us, she, this is basically a minor character, but her existence is significant because Shakespeare highlights and showcases other women in the text. This woman is of a low class. Uh, it, it's clear that Cassio is using her. He doesn't really love her, but he seems seem to be a lot in love with him. But if you look at the, uh, the, the last page, page for example, 133 and 134, she's a strong woman. Yes, she, she feels attached to him. I haven't seen you in seven weeks. Where have you been? basically partly dependent on him. Maybe he has, but we don't know what he has promised her. Whether to marry her, to love her, to take her back with him to Venice. But if you see, for example, in the book, she's tough on Cassio. Okay? She's unlike this Demona, Bigging Othello. She's unlike Emilia, who is kept in the dark by, uh, by Iago. Here, yeah, the moment she sees the handkerchief in his hand. So remember, uh, Iago took the handkerchief and he promised to throw it in Cassio's chamber. He finds the, the, the handkerchief. He's holding it and Bianca says uh, uh, somewhere, say last page 134, oh Cassio, whence came this? Where did you get this handkerchief from? This is some token from a newer friend. Is this something a woman gave, gave, you, gave it to you? Hmm? This questioning here gives her some prominence, some independence, some character that both Emilia and this Demona lack. To the felt absence now, I feel like, ah, that's why you haven't seen me in a week. You have a new woman. You are in love with another woman. Is it come to this? Well, well, ah, type. Go to woman. And then he swears to her. Interesting, this relationship. He says, no, by my faith, Bianca, wallahi. I don't know another woman. So why? Who is it? And then he says, I know not sweet. You know? I know not sweet. I found it in my chamber. I found it in my room. 
I like the work. I love this. Look at this. Here it be demanded. Here means before. Before somebody uh, asks for it. As like enough it will. I'm sure somebody is going to come up there. I'd have it copied. I want, I want you to make me an exact to knit or embroider an exact copy of this because I love it. Take it and do it and leave me for this time. Please leave me because I have other things to attend to. Now, the last point here is that uh, uh, with Cass, you and the handkerchief, there's a gap. And remember, every time there's a gap, Shakespeare leaves it for us to imagine, to anticipate, to think, to fill in the, the, the gap. We know he is very close to Othello. We know he was the go-between. We know he would send messages from Othello to Desdemona and from Desdemona to Othello. He knows them very well. He has known them very well. And we, I don't know, Othello, loves and appreciates the, the handkerchief very much. And I think it was mentioned, yeah, I think it was mentioned. It was the first gift Othello gave to this demonic. So, Cass, you must have seen it before. At least he must have heard about it, if it is magic given to Othello by his mom. And when she was dying, she remembered nothing. She, uh, like, uh, the most important thing she remembered was, hey, Othello, this is the handkerchief, take it, give it to your wife. It's uh, an Egyptian woman, gave it to me. There is magic here. If you keep it, and it, this is the story. Even his mother is good at storytelling, Othello. Even when she's dying, she's telling a story. So the point here, Cass, you must have seen this. He must have known about it or heard about it. Again, all we could easily suspend our disbelief going back to uh, Coleridge. We could suspend our disbelief and say, Khalas, yani, hiya hik. But also Shakespeare wants us to think that possibly, Cass, you must have seen this before. You must have known that this belongs to, to this demona. It's precious to her. It's dear to her heart. And he wants a copy. Why do you want a copy out of it? What do you want to do with it? Maybe, just maybe, maybe, he is partly in love with uh, with this demonic. Maybe Iago wasn't one hundred percent lying. Maybe there's some truth to his uh, to his lies. Yalla, what do you think? Hmm. Uh, some of you typed stuff. How come this Demona calling Othello the more? I don't think it was used uh, as an insult like all the time. I honestly, I haven't given this a lot of thought, uh, at least recently. Uh, uh, But look at how even like she doesn't, because more was basically used to refer to the geographical place in North Africa. And it depends some, by time, so for some people was meant to be, even the dictionary says it means people who come from South Africa, North Africa, sorry. Uh, and noble more. But we've seen how Iago and other, others used it negatively. So probably it depends on the tone. Good question, Ahmed. Did he just create his this lie, or is he lying? Which which lie, Muhammad al Khatib? Who created what lie? Uh, when Othello was telling uh, this Demona that uh, this handkerchief from his mom, that uh, no, no, no. an Egyptian. No, no. I don't think he was lying. Maybe he was lying. We don't know. Uh, so you, uh, Castor, uh, didn't hear about it before. I'm 
no, I don't know. If I have a, if I had a handkerchief like this, I would be telling everybody about it. Yeah. Sometimes you have a good pen, a lucky pen. You tell your friends, hey, this is my lucky pen. If I use it, I get distinction. Don't you, uh, don't you think that uh, he said uh, or created this lie uh, because of no. Iago? Iago told him about the handkerchief. No, 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 no. That, no, it's not about, maybe, but it's not like, it's not, don't go there like that much, that far. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think, I believe part of the stories Othello told were lies. You know, the anthropopo guy and the people whose heads grow between their shoulders, under, between their shoulders, he exaggerates to be distinguished, to, to look distinguished, to look different. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, he gave it, uh, gave uh, this demona this handkerchief. I don't know. Maybe there is some truth about it, but that's, that's not in itself a big, a big deal, an important issue. Why does Emilia ignore Bil Munasaba Kulko? Uh, why uh, does why does uh, Emilia ignore that she is taking it to her husband now she knows that is Demona exactly that's a good a very good uh, question that's an important why this why Emilia why are you doing this of course like the, the unpoetic answers that so that Shakespeare can uh, finish the play the way he wants. But that's not good. That's not loyal of you, this, uh, uh, Emilia. That's not good. I don't understand this question, uh, Sarah. Why does he keep the handkerchief if he really, who's he? Damon, when you ask questions, use the names other than the he or she, because I keep uh, I go back to the questions later on. So why does he keep the handkerchief if he really doesn't know? Uh, if you're talking about Cassio, yeah, there is this discussion uh, idea that maybe he is partly in love with 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 uh, this Demona. Uh, well, I know. Mafish Tukhan ma bedun nar. Do you believe in this? Honestly, no. Maybe. Uh, I've, used, I've seen this used twice and in a very horrible way. واحد بيقول لك مثلا بشائر لقطوا معها براشين بتغش. لا يا زلمه معقول مستحيل I know بشائر I trust her. كان بيجي بيقول لك ما فيش دخان بدون نار. طب ما انت اللي ولا عملت الدخان تو. So I honestly don't I hate well, this is one of the most uh, hated uh, statements. There's no smoke, uh, fire without smoke. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed is going back to uh, the more. I'll, we'll have to go back to study the, this. Let's see the word barbar. The barbar. He is barbar, but the barbar is from North Africa. But later on, the word was used to mean barbaric. In the case of the word Philistines. Do you know the word Philistine? Yeah. What do you mean? It means backwards. Yeah. It's a Yeah. وخلص صارت وهي اقصد اقصد فيها سكان فلسطين الزمان قديم بس فرض ذا ذا ايديا كان في ذا واز ان ارتيكل اون هار اتس بروفينج ذات ذوز فلسطينز وير بروبلي مور ادفانس ذان ماني سيفيلايزيشنز اراوند ذيم بس ذي وير ديسكرايب داس باي ذا فيكتورز ريمبر اتس ذا فيكتورز ذا بيبل هو وين وور ذا وورز ار ذا بيبل هو رايت هيستوري يو دونت هاف تو بيليف هيستوري يس سو ماي كويستشن واز ايم تو like I have this in mind that we are sometimes racist. We don't uh, know unconsciously. Yep. Don't know we, it. We like, normalize racism. It becomes part of our life. We we'll like have when to somebody to the history of the word Ahmed. When you're telling somebody that you are racist, you hate black people, and he's like, I have uh, black friends. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's racist. He doesn't know that this is Trump do it do it all the time. Does it all the time? Uh, that it's racist. You don't mean to be racist, but you are racist. Saying this means you are thinking your mindset is racist. True. If you don't see racism, this is racism sometimes. Yeah, this is why I'm, I'm saying maybe this demona is racist in a way. Maybe she loves Othello, but she still thinks that 
maybe she she loves him despite he's being a Moor, a black person. We'll, we'll have to look more into this. Even like he, she keeps going back to his origin. When she says, isn't he jealous? She says, the son where he comes from. Yeah. Uh, the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. Yeah, and he drew all these humors, all these emotions. Humors means emotions, feelings. So, you know, jealousy and probably other positive things. Yeah. Guess, uh, what's his name? Z uh, Zaid. Thank you, Zaid. That's a very good point. B uh, Bianca here loves Cassio pure love. That's, that's correct. That's true. I, I uh, probably I didn't mention this. That's correct. He may just like uh, the handkerchief, or is it color? Yeah, he could simply like it, or he probably is in love with the owner of this handkerchief. So at the first time, Cassio was seeing this Demona. He likes her, and he told Iago that she is a beautiful woman, and maybe he fell in love. I I can't remember what exactly. Uh, uh, what exactly he says he said before? Where is this Sarah coming from? It, I, are you confusing Sarah? Are you confusing uh, this uh, uh, Rodrigo with uh, with Cass? You remember it was Rodrigo who was in love, openly in love with uh, uh, with with this Demona, even when. Uh, when uh, Iago said maybe she is in love with Cassio, he says, no, she's a good woman. He defended her. I can't remember where, where this is. Can you uh, point the, the, the scene or the line? Now, I want you to look uh, into this and to reply to uh, the video when I post it on Facebook. Uh, so I remind me, so I go back to it if I uh, forgot it. Uh, so if anybody, does anybody have a question? Anything to comment? Any question, any suggestion, any point? Five. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll stop here. We'll uh, uh, we'll uh, meet Chala on on Saturday uh, to see uh, uh, Act Four, Scenes One and Two. Thank you very much, and go do uh, perform your Taraweeh prayers. Thank you.